Happy New Year, Wildcats, and very happy to be joined by the head football coach of the University of Arizona, Brent Brandon, taking over here in a beautiful day, as it always is in Southern Arizona. 24 years ago, you were here on, on campus working under Coach Tomey as a graduate assistant. Go back to that first day when you arrived on campus, what were your thoughts? Well, I was just so excited to be here because I'd had such high level of respect for Coach Tomey. I had played against his teams, I coached against his teams. Um, so I was so excited to be here. And then uh, the, just the staff and the people that were here at the time, my brother was a player, so I had a connection to a bunch of players. I was obviously really young. Um, but that was just a magical time in our life because my wife and I were newlyweds. So we'd just gotten married uh, and we were, you know, living in Tucson. We were living right down the street here in Sam Hughes and, and uh, you know, kind of walked to work. And it was just a, it was kind of the start of this football journey for me, you know, like there were there were a couple other stops in there, but like like this one, so many of the uh, opportunities that I've had as a coach came from people that were part of that staff with Coach Tomey. Um, so much of my like learning and my growth as a coach came has come from, you know, subsequent years where like I'm I'm talking to Dino Babers about offensive football or or about being a head coach or I'm talking to Rob Ionello about building a roster. Like you know, even as recently in the last couple months, and so. Uh, you know, worked for Rich, El Rich Ellerson at, uh, at, at Cal Poly. It's just like, it's just that part of it was really special. Uh, you have many deep connections with uh, the University of Arizona. Talked about some of them there, both personally and professionally. On the practice field here uh, on campus is, it's the Dick Tomey practice right. field. So any player, current player that walks onto that field knows immediately who, who coach was. What, what does that mean to you in terms of his legacy and how it continues? I think it's awesome that they've honored him that way, you know, that, that, you know, people are always going to see that and want to know like who, yeah, this coach told me, right. If they're, if they're new or, or whatever. But I, I think, um, you know, the people in this town and, and coach told me was so good about being out of the community. He was so comfortable in his own skin that he was never trying to hide from a win or a loss or from the public, you know, him, him and Nancy were just normal people, right. They live right down the street that he walked to work every day. Um, and I think that part of it was really what uh, made him, you know, where people just loved him so much was because he was such a normal guy. And so see, knowing that that legacy is there and, and, and now that I get to, you know, practice with a football team out there, it's like, I think I've always felt like he was looking over my shoulder, but now he like literally is, right? So <laughs> there, There's a, a kinship, a brotherhood of Arizona players, Arizona coaches, you mentioned some of them that, that go back you know, really a quarter century. How do you, how do you explain? How do you put into words how this group has stayed together and how those connections have continued? Well, I, I think that goes back to Coach Tomey, and I think his, uh, you know, the way he built the staff and the, and the environment he created, like for his players and his coaches, all of those people had a really good experience, and so because of that experience being positive, whether you won games or lost games, that that, that keeps them you know uniquely connected. And I think that's, you know, maybe his best legacy is that there are thousands of people, thousands of, you know, people that worked with him here or worked with him somewhere else or interacted with him, you know, on a college campus somewhere or were coach, was coached by him that he really has this profound effect on. You mentioned, um, yeah, you, you've had a great job at San Jose State, done tremendous things there, just came up another winning season, another bowl game. Uh, but when that phone call came from, from Dave Heakey here in the last couple of days, what was that like? I was excited. You know, I think, you know, a couple minutes ago, you asked me about when we were, when we were first here 24 years ago. You know, when we left, I think, you know, my wife and I were always like wondering if we would ever get a chance to come back. And that's what was so cool about that phone call. And then it really, and then it led to like three nights of no sleep and like all cut, not, not that much. It, like, you know, it, it went pretty fast after the first phone call. And so, uh, it, you know, that's it was the start of this whirlwind. So I was really excited to talk to him. Um, and, and all of a sudden, you, you know, as you start going through the process, you're like, shoot, I think this has a chance. And then your excitement, you know, like, you know, you had it really fired up about it, which I am. So I'm glad it worked out the way it did. All right. We'll talk about football in a moment. I want to ask about your family because, that, uh, you have an Arizona alum. You're married to an Arizona yeah. alum. You have some great kids, but tell us about that. Yes. Yes. I'm married to an Arizona alum. I got three. Three kids, uh, daughters, Blake and Casey. Um, Blake is a junior at University of Colorado, and Casey is a freshman at University of Colorado. And then I got a 16-year-old son named Scotty. And, uh, you know, 
the one of the, the blessings I think for our family is that on our football journey we've stayed at places. So we've been, you know, every stop has been a sustainable thing, and uh, I think that's been good for them. And so, uh, you know, they're awesome people. They live and die football. Uh, they're all, you know, they're young adults, but we're proud. of them. So back to football. Then when, when the Wildcats hit the field here this season, uh, what will the fancy, what style does Coach Brandon want to put on the field? Well, I, I think, you know, what I would like to say is you're going to see a team that plays extremely hard, a team that plays for each other, and a team that's fun to watch and looks like they're having fun while they're playing. And I think that part of it is uh, something we were able to get to at San Jose. And um, in my experience, it, it has led to good playing good football and having good results. You've talked about people and how important people are. I mean, take us through what that has meant in terms of your coaching philosophy, uh, not only with your staff, but with your players and with the with the fans in the community. People make the place, right? And like Tucson, Arizona is a great place. San Jose is a great place. But the people are what you remember. Like that's where you know that's where your time is invested. Whether it's the the players that you're coaching or the people that you're working with, um, and so I, that part of it is, um, and that kind of, that really comes from Coach Tommy. Like I've always been outgoing, and I already always have been comfortable in in kind of you know being out and about in space and socializing or whatever. But um, Coach Tommy kind of like leveled that up in terms of how we invested in our players how, you know, what kind of personal connection we built with our players. And I think that's one of the reasons why you asked earlier about the brotherhood and why it's so strong here. Um, you know, that was, that, that was the very start of my career was Coach Tone. And so, uh, and, and that's something that I've carried to, throughout my whole coaching career so far. And it's something I'm excited to like dive into and invest in, in the players here at the UVA. Uh, Arizona's going to the Big 12 yep. uh, this fall, uh, but uh, and I want to ask about recruiting, and of course you have a lot of West Coast ties, but has recruiting really become uh, almost a, a nationwide phenomenon for college football, or or do you want to stay in particular focused in the West in your recruiting? Well, I, th I think it'll be both. You know, I, I think, you know, in terms of the national thing, you know, I, I think that's that can be complicated, right? Because some players that you recruit from far away are absolutely ready and prepared to be that far away from home and go through the football journey and the ups and downs and the highs and lows. And some of them are. And so when it gets hard, they just want to go back home, right? Another part of every player's experience is can my family, can my friends, can my high school coaches watch me play, right? And I think that's one of the things that's really unique about our location is that we have excellent high school football in the state of Arizona. And then we got proximity to other states that where they play really good football, right? Whether it's California or Texas or Utah or you know, so I think that part of it is exciting to me also, is that you have a chance to, you know, recruit out of state, but also I think it's, it starts by knowing who you're talking to in state and, and building those good relationships where those high school coaches trust you, where they trust you to, with one of their, you know, young people that they really care about. So uh, a lot of times since you've been here now, of course, uh, things have changed. You mentioned your press conference, the facilities, et cetera. It's a great city, of course, because it all evolves around U of A, right? Uh, both academically and athletically. How does that work as an advantage in terms of the facilities, the community, uh, the the fan support? Uh, again, everything that goes into making Arizona a, a good football program. I think, I think it's like a the fan base, alumni, students, faculty, like. All of those pieces understanding how much they can impact a game on a Saturday by just making noise, by, you know, being aggressive with the officials. Just, you know what I mean? I mean, it's really, it's really impactful. And I think uh, some people don't understand that because of the convenience of watching it on your TV or whatever. And to me, one of the advantages of being here is that everyone is so passionate about this school and it's the only school here, right? That because of that, with that kind of support, you can create that game day atmosphere where people don't want to come here. Right? That's a, you know, we were able to experience some of that when I was an assistant at Oregon State. Tough place to play. People did not like coming there. Right? University of Oregon, tough place to play. Right? University of Washington, tough place to play. So, right, those environments and your fan base and your students and your faculty and everyone that touches, yeah, you know, in the community understand like, no, 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 you're actually helping. You're actually helping us win games by making them jump and jump off sides six times. You know, that, that, that part of it is so impactful. So I, I love that about the setup here. Um, it's definitely very different than the one I just came from, right? You know, we're 
30 miles from Stanford or 20 miles from Stanford and 30 miles from Cal and 50 miles or, you know, a hundred miles from Sac State. And like, so there's like all these schools. And then you're also sharing that space with the 49ers and the Warriors and the Giants and the A's, you know, it's just a, it's a much different thing, you know? So, so in my head, like, I love that this is it here and everything is so centered around U of A. So you had your first meeting with the players. Just give us uh, whatever you'd like, some insights into what you told your your, your new players here at Arizona. I, I really was just introducing myself. Um, you know, I, I talked to them about uh, trying to work through this time in their life is really tricky, right? Because, you know, they just had a special season, right? And so, you know, to have a season like that, like you got to be really connected. Like it's got to be really, it, and and coaches and players are all part of that, right? And so, and then, you know, when coaches take another job, which is part of the business, just like a player going to the portal is part of the business now. You know, when those things happen, it just impacts how everybody feels, right? And and so that part of it was I was just and then and then all of a sudden, I don't know how long, five days later, you know, this new guy walks in and you're like, Well, I don't know him. You know what I mean? So I was just trying to help them understand like I was gonna surround them with great coaches. I was gonna care about them as men. I was gonna be involved in their life outside of football, um, you know, that's, and, and then I asked a bunch of them offline, they said, do you guys have friends that played at San Jose? Like, ask your friends about me. If you need a character reference or, or someone to, like, help you get an idea of what I'm all about or how, it, what my program feels like or what the experience is like there, just talk to them. And that's something interesting to point out because some of us have called people in San, the San Jose area and said, okay, what was Coach Brennan like? And uh, all of them say the same thing, that the players loved playing for him. Uh, why was that? I mean, beyond winning games, wh- why did they enjoy their experience? Or why do they enjoy their experience? I think you have to love each other to win games, right? I think that's like a fundamental, right? Now, it takes time to build that. But I think this team had that here this year. I think they love each other. Uh, you know, I, the the team, like the players, I just – I always want to be real with them. You know, I just always want to be real. I don't want them to ever feel like I'm not being authentic. And, and, um, and, and also like, and, and when you are, you know, not that way, they know, like, you know, like students, like they feel that they, that, you know, they know something's up if you're not telling the truth. And so I, I used to want to operate in that space. And so I, you know, as soon as this happened, like, you know, this happened. I found a Monday night, I was getting the job and I found a uh, call team meeting for 10 in the morning, Tuesday and met with the team and, you know, told them straight up and cried and told them I love them. And it was awful, you know, it was awful. But so for me to have that meeting with the players after just having the meeting with the team in San Jose, like I get it. I get what they're, you know, they chose to come here, whether they liked me or not. Like I was some part of their decision to come to San Jose, right? And so I just like always wanted to be authentic, always wanted to be tell the truth and keep it real and not try and not, you know, you know, not I don't want them to ever feel like they're being, you know, sold something. Excitement level right now. Oh man, it's quite high. <laughs> so I love it and I, I just I love meeting all the people and it's really cool for me because even like I look at like the people that I've met, like the athletic department is so much more robust, right? And then also there's a lot of jobs that didn't exist twenty four years ago, like creative and you know uh all that stuff but uh it's really cool how committed everybody is to being consistently successful it's really great, to great to have you here great to have you back <laughs> Thank you. Right. brent brennan head football coach university of arizona and uh, we'll see a lot of him in the uh, coming months and back at arizona stadium very soon